Hi club members, I'm Zayden and we are back with another video on the Blackout Club Mechanics. Now for those who haven't seen my stamina and movement video, I recommend you guys watch that first. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Okay, so today we're going to be explaining how Chorus hunts for us in the Blackout Club and some tactics you can do to outsmart them. A fair disclaimer, I cannot confirm this is how actually a Chorus works because I am not a Chorus official. Uh, and nor am I an officially trained lucid <laughs> yet. Uh, these are just all based on my observations of having 900 plus hours in the Black Hawk Club. When you sin, Chorus will congest towards you in an effort to grab you and close your exits. If you continually sin in the same area, multiple lucids will come out of the nearest red door, and sleepers will go out of their way to enter the area. Not to mention that the angel will show up in patrol too. Be mindful of when you sin and how the adults will react. Moreover, all adults will be faster than you, but not always. In my last video, we discussed how the stamina bar works. To review, your character has a slight wind up and wind down. They will reach top speed for a bit and then decrease. The duration of the top speed is relative to the amount of stamina you have in total. So if they have half a bar of stamina, then you will peak for a shorter period of time than if you were at a full bar. The only way to outrun the adults is when you are going top speed. To achieve consistent top speed, you will need to use a candy bar or indomitable. Otherwise, gaining height, directly confronting, or being silent is the only way to avoid chorus when they have detected you. As y'all can see, the angel is chasing me at this moment. His entire goal is to root me out and exhaust all of my options. Here he's coming from the back end of that house, so I quickly run out and use my full bar. The gaining height is an excellent way to break away from the shape and create more distance, which is essential when you're running away from him. Also maintaining a high stamina bar is optimal because that will make sure that you can run long distances. So running and then stopping to rest is very crucial here. In this clip, I am basically at my rope's end here, having only a flashbang and a grappling hook to combat the shape. Immediately with my low stamina, I decide to jump down this well as it will give me the most amount of distance from the shape and I hope he doesn't follow me. Uh, so he beckons me now because he's too far away, so I decide to drop. Taking the drop, I cancel into the vault and then I start working my way around. Yeah, so unfortunately he follows me, so I have to run a little bit and then kind of just build up my little teeny tiny bit of stamina I have and just kind of use those little sprints to get that distance from him. The shape is hot on my tail now, so I have to use one of my other avenues of escape. Hopefully I quick throw this grapple hook without seeing the actual edge because that blinding light is there. Thankfully it's just tall enough. In this specific clip, I alert the shape to my presence after losing him. He shows up on the nearest red door, chasing right after me. I take my only avenue of escape, which is going up the ladder, doubling down on it because of the beckoning call and hopefully I reach the top, maybe, I do, and I keep moving. If the shape for some reason loses his target, he will investigate anyone that sins in the area. In this clip, I sin and the lucid detects me, so the shape shows up to investigate, although I am not the target. If the target were to be spotted during this duration, he would immediately go into the door and chase after his target. Oh, hello, shape. Yes, hello. Okay, goodbye. A cool trick to note is that if you flashbang or trank dart the shape via crossbow or trap, he will forget where you are and go back into the door. This is useful for resetting him back to that finding stage. Be warned though, if you are detected, he will show up. This only works if the shape does not see you after the disable. With this in mind, let's go over other threats. Sleepers. Sleepers have precise hearing but lack any sight. They are the easiest and least threatening adult we have to deal with. Here, Silver Paul avoids the sleeper by doing a jump fault. The jump fault is completely silent, so he can't hear him. He does hear him when he drops again and continues running. In this clip, I alert two sleepers to my presence and then proceed to do a jump vault that leaves him completely dumbfounded. This trick doesn't really work well versus lucids because they have sight. Uh, do know that if you are in light, they can see you even from incredible distances away. So be very careful when you're crossing over light hazards 
and just be careful doing this with them. In this instance, I'm going to do a bunny hop. So basically, I'm going to jump. That's a puddle of sound, puddle of sound, puddle of sound, and he doesn't know where I'm at now. Again, if he's lucid, he has eyes. In this particular instance, I jump onto the crate so as to give a silent jump, hop far away so the lucid will hear me further away. Um, I notice the sleeper that's coming up, and I jump over there on that ledge so he'll hear me jumping there, jump to the side of him, and I'm a hold carpet and take a photo. While knowing our enemy can certainly be a great asset to our success, it is also necessary to learn the environment. Red Acre features many environmental traps, from the campsites by the treehouse to the very overtly large lampposts. Plan your routes accordingly, avoid those large bright spaces, and favor the shadowy, quiet, um, muffled floor spaces. Sound in the Blackout Club is how most of the adults will first notice your presence. Sound depends on two things, how fast you're moving and what you're moving on. Pay attention to the lines that show up by your eye on the bottom of your screen. These lines will indicate how much sound you are making, and different terrain will add to this. For example, the muffled floor I'm walking on in Subliminal will dampen my footsteps. Likewise, grass will too. Walking on pavement or hardwood floors will add to your sound. Be mindful how fast you are going and what you're stepping on. You might be able to run on grass with little to no punishment because it is muffled terrain. But if you were to do that on pavement, the whole town would be alerted. Here, I used foam to create a pocket of muffled space. This pocket allowed me to avoid that sleeper with little to no effort. To take down AI, you can use a ninja takedown mechanic. So what you do is you're just going to throw an item. It can be a grapple hook. In this clip, I use grapple hook. You can use foam or a firework and just toss it. And then you're going to jump around and then you'll just kind of connect in most cases. You can still use this mechanic if you don't have a hero item. You can just simply jump around them and grab them. When you throw an item at the adults, you will be granted a free invincibility frame. You can use this frame to still grab onto them after that. Something else to note that's not really related is that you can film doors and kick them to make it completely sound. If you're playing with friends, be mindful of your friend and their position. If they're wrestling with a sleeper or lucid, you can actually intervene and spare your friend the pain of shoving and the whole shebang. And that's really all I have for y'all today. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this. And I hope you guys learned something that you can definitely take back to your friends, maybe your static group, and y'all can maybe help each other learn and kind of coach each other on. Um, I definitely want to see more people playing the game. So yeah, until next time, I'll see you guys. This is Aiden signing off here. And yeah, I'll be watching. Ugh, something I wanted to add, but it just didn't feel like it had any place, is this experiment I took the time to randomly do in one of my games in which you'll see me vault between these two hedges to kind of show the silence of the vaults and how you can navigate between ledges in the game. I mess up there, so that, that, that one doesn't count. But it's a good example. Like I, I made that sound and then I vaulted, so he stopped hearing me after that. Like he didn't hear me rise up there. He heard me now for a second because I'm running on it, right? It's still muffled. So it's still pretty difficult for him to get a clear idea of where I'm at while I'm doing that. Okay, but for realsies, I'm gone now, all right? So, bye.